Well, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being there and welcome to the ninth Civil Justice Council National Forum on access to justice for those without means. Before we begin, please may I just touch on a few matters of housekeeping. Firstly, the whole of the uh, day, and uh, including contributions made during it, will be recorded. So please bear that in mind, and the recording will be subsequently available on the CJC website. There are points in the day when uh, you may wish to ask a question. Uh, those points will be highlighted to you by the relevant chair or facilitator. Please use the Q&A box that you will see at that stage on the right hand side of your screen. We ask you please not to use that throughout the day, on only when uh, uh, invited to do so, so that we can all concentrate together on the main session. Any technical queries, please use the live support button on the top menu bar, and that will put you through to the tech support team from Amplitude who are kindly assisting us at this national forum. It's our first time of delivering a national forum online. I, I know there'll be imperfections. Please bear with that. And in the best of spirit, let's make the most of the day ahead. W without more, uh, may I pass over to our chairman, the chairman of the Civil Justice Council, the head of civil justice, the master of the roles, Sir Terence Etherton. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robin. Well, good morning to everyone. Uh, like Robin, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this ninth national forum, Access to Justice for Those Without Means, the future. This is a major event in the calendar of the Civil Justice Council and in many ways represents everything that the Civil Justice Council exists for, improving access to justice for those without means and providing a more efficient and cost-effective civil justice system. Importantly, it's an unrivaled opportunity to bring together all of us from across the often widely dispersed civil justice system. It provides an opportunity to reflect, to learn, to share, and to look forward with a shared commitment to improving access to justice. This year, we have just under 400 delegates, which is on any footing, uh, very impressive. Um, among the many people attending are people from across the entire scene, facilitators, speakers, panelists, but the important point is not just the number of people who are attending, but their range uh, and the degree of expertise that they have. Everybody is here from chief executives to those who work on the front line. And that mix of people will provide an extremely fruitful source for debate throughout the day. One of the most important features of this year 
has been the acceleration of digitization in the court system. Civil justice reform, uh, with its emphasis on digitization, was already underway when the COVID virus struck. But what we've seen uh, through the necessities uh, prompted by COVID has been uh, an acceleration in the use of digitization at all levels of the judiciary and in every field, whether it be civil or family or crime. We've learned a lot from this acceleration, apart from requiring a good degree of patience. But one of the most important has been the realization of the, of the significance of data collection, which I'll come back to. Now, as Robin has said, one of the things that we've learned is irrespective of people's competence uh, in IT, there are certain things uh, that make the IT not always the most reliable things like bandwidth, connections, and so on. As Robin has said, things are bound to go wrong today at some point. But if and when they do, please be patient. Um, the uh, IT has been assisted by Amplitude, and I know how hard they and others have worked to try to make together the system with its breakouts a viable one. I also want to thank, on behalf of all of you and myself, the Civil Justice Council's Access to Justice Standing Committee, led by Mr Justice Robin Knowles. They've been uh, preparing today and as always, they've been supported by the CJC Secretariat team, Sam, Lee and Graham. This is actually Graham's ninth national forum. And I think it's now an institution which is very much associated with him and his organisational skills. Thank my thanks to all of them. I would also like to give a special thanks to Fiona Rutherford, the Director of Access to Justice uh, at the Ministry of uh, uh, at the Ministry. She will be speaking to you, but she provides obviously a most important link with the uh, MOJ itself. And because as I've said, what we've come to learn very much, particularly in relation to data is how it's, it's so important for all parts of the system to work together. As I've said, I'll come back to that in a moment. Leaving aside the specific issue of digitization, this has been a busy and important one for the Civil Justice Council. Among other work this year, we've delivered reports on how vulnerable people can be better served by the civil courts, on antisocial behaviour injunctions, and with the help of the Legal Education Foundation, conducting a second, a conducting a rapid review on the effect of COVID on our courts at a very early stage in the pandemic, which gave us, which gave us uh, an important uh, insight. 
We've also continued the embedded to embed the recommendations from our alternative dispute resolution report, responded to consultations, and have begun to better understand the purpose and effect of the pre-action protocols. That review of the pre-action protocols is being spearheaded by the member of the council, Professor Andrew Higgins. And we ask you to complete the survey if you haven't. This is a complex uh, piece of work and its object is really to test whether pre-action protocols are of value in the system, and if so, to what extent. Now, it's invidious to select particular people uh, when everybody on the council has been working so hard. But I would like to make a special tribute to the work done by DCJ Barry Kosher, how he manages to complete all of his court work as a DCJ and spend time either writing or organizing others to help write with him these massively important reports on things like antisocial behavior injunctions. And already that work has had a significant reception uh, and, uh, and welcome uh, in the field of criminal law and family law. I mentioned early on uh, the rapid review on the effect of COVID on our courts. And this was a very important report because although it only, as it were, uh, received the views of users rather than uh, judges and others, it did demonstrate very, very quickly in the pandemic how important it was going to be going forward to have properly prepared and accurate data in order to ensure that the use of remote hearings has been, is being, and will be continued to the advantage of those using the civil justice system. And for that, uh, I have to give a special thank you uh, to Dr. Natalie Byram of the Legal Education Foundation. Now, I mentioned that one of the most important features, so far as I am concerned, uh, of this uh, accelerated use of digitization throughout the system is the oppression is the appreciation of data i think it's fair to say that the critical importance of clear and consistent information within the justice system was not understood certainly at the start of my tenure as mr as an important feature of the system. But the important point here is that without consistent and reliable data on a range of matters, we simply do not know who has been using the system, how they've been using it, and how it might be improved. This affects not only the work of the Civil Justice Council, but also the work carried out by the um, Ministry of Justice and HMCTS on how the court is actually performing on the front line. 
particularly important points for the future, which we're seeking to capture, not, is not merely therefore management information in the strict sense, um, which has not always been um, uh, at all accurate for various reasons, but an identification of who it is that's using the system. Are they disabled? Are they not? Are they suffering from age discrimination or not? Um, uh, are there any ways in which the system fails a particular category for reasons uh, which are peculiar to them or not? Um, it is not easy to obtain this information, uh, but the Ministry of Justice and HNCDS say that they are committed to getting a much better collection of reliable data, which will help to monitor what's happening on the front line, but also to um, use the data to analyze whether the system is serving the best ends of civil justice. One of the other features and a remarkable one of the year has been the extent to which all aspects of the civil justice system have worked increasingly closely together. This is best exemplified by the work carried out by a group which I set out, which I set up in late May, chaired by Sir Robin Knowles, to deal with the problems arising or going inevitably to arise to deal with the lifting of the stay on possession actions and more recently on preventing uh, evictions uh, over in this case the period to the 11th of January uh, to um, prevent so far as possible homelessness now, homelessness as a policy is not part of the remit of the Civil Justice Council and the, and the uh, uh, Civil Justice Reform Committee. Policy is a matter for government. The CPRC in particular is concerned with the rules and the remit of the committee to make the rules such that civil justice is more accessible and more efficient and more effective uh, in creating an accessible system. The um, working group which I've set up I think is unique within government and has not been used before. It involved all aspects of a relevant civil justice, civil justice system so that is not simply judges, uh, representatives from the Ministry of Justice, the Ministry of Housing, and HMCDS, but also uh, providers of legal aid uh, and the voluntary sector itself. The concern of government has been it's a policy perfectly correctly uh, to prevent homelessness 
on a scale which is preventable. And the object of the working of the subcommittee uh, in relation to the lifting of the stay was designed to try to avoid uh, unnecessary uh, homelessness when the courts and the voluntary sectors and the other people on the committee can be and did concentrate on the use of the court system to provide um, greater access to justice, uh, to provide a greater efficiency by providing a course specifically designed in the courts to try to encourage agreement between landlords for landlords to take a sensible position, to limit the number of priority cases, and so on. And uh, in the sense of that objective, it has been achieved so far because we have not seen the wave of homelessness that everybody predicted and the general guidance uh, and framework uh, of the a working group devised over many months of hard work has been uh, effective to achieve its objective. And the same is now true of eviction. Uh, again, again, the uh, subcommittee have used their expertise uh, to provide a system so far as possible uh, which will highlight the need for action on behalf of landlords in a limited number of priority cases, but to manage others uh, so that they provide an effective uh, support system where possible uh, for um, civil litigants. And I have been um, asking the Lord Chancellor to promote this cross-jurisdictional work as a model which could be used across government. And so I do think that, uh, as I've said, that one of the most important features of the pandemic and of IT acceleration is this whole notion of collaborative working uh, with the MOJ, HMCTS, our judges, and where appropriate, the Ministry of Housing. I will not be leading that work, of course, because it will stretch in the future, and um, my time has now come to an end. But I do use this occasion to welcome, by way of a special welcome, to Sir Geoffrey Voss, my successor. He's taking up the reins in January. I know that he's committed also to the vision for reform, and he will tell you more about that later. But he is also committed passionately to delivery through collaboration and he understands that civil justice is a collective endeavour. So finally, may I thank all of you working in this sector. The forum has grown larger and larger. And it's produced excellent work over the four years that I've been on it. And I believe that we have made huge steps in the more efficient delivery of civil justice and improvement to its accessibility.
I thank you for everything. I wish you all success in this continuing endeavor for the public good. And I look forward to seeing your continued success in the time and months to come. I wish you a very, very successful conference uh, and um, wish you all well. Thank you very much. To Terence, our thanks to you. I know I speak on behalf of all who are with us and certainly on behalf of every single member of the Civil Justice Council in expressing admiration and gratitude for all that you have done. We have seen every step of the way your commitment, your readiness to trust and your leadership. Uh, that combination will endure. You've set an example and uh, we will continue to follow that example. Thank you very much for your remarks, but far more for everything.